Brooke is already annoying me. Is it just me? Yeah, Brooke is annoying me. Like, are you an attack dog? Like, girl, shut the fuck up. And what's up, Scotty gang? What's going on, new subscribers? What's going on to all of the hate watchers out there? This be your boy, Scotty by Nature TV, and we're here for a brand new review of Basketball Wives Season 11, Episode 2. Now, before we get into the review, let's go ahead and get into what we got coming up this week on the platform. Now, as you guys already know, tomorrow is Wednesday, which means that the new episode of Chasing Atlanta will be airing, and also means that right after the episode, Scotty, Jamar, Tramiel, Terrence, Carl, and Jeremy Speaks TV will be going live to discuss said episode. So make sure you guys tune in. The link is already up and available. So make sure you go to the um the Chasing Panel playlist, drop on down to the end, and get that link, okay? And make sure you guys click that notification bell so you can be notified. Also on Friday, be sure to tune in to the third episode of One on One, which features one of my unproblematic faves, Calvin Michaels. We'll be talking about the past the present, the future of its platform, and we'll be talking about music and all things that we are both interested in. So make sure you guys get into that. And then on Saturday, make sure you guys tune into the live review of Love and Mary Chuntsville. I'll be going live after tea. And then it seems to me like you guys have been enjoying the Basketball Wives reviews, but the, the Basketball Wives um, panels, but they are only for a limited time because there's nothing for us to do on Sunday. So make sure you guys tune in this Sunday on T's page as myself, Jamie, that's me, Josiah's World TV, and giving you the real tea, I'll come together for another Basketball Wives panel on T's platform this Sunday. Make sure you guys tune into that. So with that being said, that's pretty much all that we got for the church announcement. So let's go ahead and get into the review. Now, apparently Master Splinter is back with her, um, or whatever, and Evelyn meets up with her. And Shawnee speaks on her new husband. As you all know that she had this spinoff show about her wedding. and she's married to this preacher now that's in Houston, and she's a first lady. And she was talking about how, you know, um, when she left LA and moved to Houston, she felt like it slowed her down. She sat down, she's not on the go as much, and it was probably what she needed to get out of LA. You know, it's probably what was needed for her. So she's obviously in a happy place. Not that I really give up because I don't give up about her, honestly, but yeah, she's in a great place. And she says that she's in LA to accept an award for um, women of excellence. I don't see how she's any form of a woman with excellence when all she does is um, create scenarios for women to exploit themselves and make them make themselves look like a damn fool and don't take any accountability for it. But that's what you call excellence. Okay, girl. So anyway, Evelyn arrives, you know, they get together. And then Evelyn tells Shawnee about her situation with Vanessa. She clearly, she accuses Vanessa of being a mouthpiece, but states that, you know, her and her, her and the baby mama are actually cool. Her son is actually with the baby mama right now. So they have a pretty decent relationship and all the things that Vanessa said in regards to Annie. I think that is Carl's baby mama's uh, name, Annie. Everything she said in regards to Annie and everything that happened within a relationship with Carl and um, Evelyn that Vanessa speaking on is all untrue and not facts. Um, she says that she really feels bad for her. She starts talking about her hair, you know, talking about the bang yang and how it was long at the back, but it's up at the front. And even though I don't like Evelyn, and even though I am definitely rooting for Vanessa to keep on taking her mother ass down, everything that Evelyn said about that hair was the damn truth because the hair was a damn mess. It's definitely a mess. But, you know, um, I just think it's funny that Evelyn is sitting up here. I feel bad for her. I feel bad for her. I feel bad for her. But you want motherfuckers to feel bad for you. And I just feel like a lot of the things that's that's going on right now, and this is just the second episode, all the things that's going on right now are all the things that Evelyn has pulled with other motherfuckers on this show. And she's getting it all back. I've been telling y'all that for the longest. Since since this show been back on, and ever since it's, um we've been hearing about all the stuff in the blogs and stuff like that, I've been telling y'all that this ain't nothing but her karma and she's getting it all back. And it's about time that her ass get this back because she's been running the muck in the palace for far too motherfucking long. And we've all allowed her to do this for way too damn long. She needs to sit the down and get over herself. I am all for Vanessa coming for her. Even when she's in, even when she up for it, I'm still going to call Vanessa out. Don't get me wrong. But 
she's definitely i'm definitely rooting for her to continue to come for evelyn ass i'm just saying um let's see so the next thing that we see in this situation is jackie and vanessa you know they meeting up um at the top of a hill i guess you know to work out i guess but they ain't really gonna work out this is just for the damn scene um they discuss what happened with evelyn here go jackie i mean the view is so beautiful that i don't want to dampen the mood and talk about drama but girl you don't give up about how beautiful the view is you're here to do a damn job and that's to bring up the bullshit so stop playing with me um jackie don't fucking play with me like this girl you know what the fuck going on Y'all know what the f going on. You know what the f going on. So stop playing with me, girl. You know what you're here to do. You're here to get the shit going. Like you always do. We already know what the f you here for, Jackie. So stop it. So um, they discuss what happened with Evelyn and Vanessa. And, and Vanessa's whole situation is, I don't respect side chicks. I don't like people that break up happy homes. I don't like none of that. And I just feel like Evelyn is not own enough to being a side chick. But you do know that Evelyn has been exposed for being a side chick more than one time. And when she was exposed to being a side chick, when it came down to Tammy and her husband, she never did take accountability for that. She wanted that shit to be deleted, but it ain't motherfucking deleted, okay? It ain't gonna never be deleted. You were fucking that lady husband when she was with him. And even though you didn't know, you were still a mother side chick. So own it. We all have had moments where we was with somebody and didn't know that they was with somebody. I have, okay? I probably was a side mother my damn self and didn't even know it or knew or, or whatever you knew. So it is what it is. So... You know, Beth, Vanessa said, well, I'm willing to have a conversation with her. It's really not this serious. We can sit down and have a conversation. So Jackie is happy that Vanessa is actually willing to sit down with Evelyn and really sort this thing out because the issue really ain't that deep and the issue ain't nobody's issue. It ain't got nothing to do with nobody. If Evelyn is cool with that lady and enough to have a son with that lady and keeping her son, then that's what it is. So then we get into Jennifer and Christian. OK, they discuss the party. And then they start talking about the Vanessa, you know, Jennifer were like, well, you know, Vanessa started all that drama with Evelyn. First of all, she didn't start shit with Evelyn. You started the shit too, okay? Like, yeah, Vanessa gave you the tea, but you decided to bring that tea to Brooke so Brooke can go back and tell Evelyn. So you was a part of getting the shit started yourself, Jennifer. Don't take, your, don't take yourself out of the equation. She gave you the tea, but you gave the tea to Brooke so Brooke can get the tea to Evelyn because you didn't want to give it to Evelyn because you didn't want to come across messy and you didn't know how Evelyn was going to take it from you. So you had a part in this too. You, If it wasn't for you, the mess when they got started at that party. I'm just being honest. You know, I'm just saying, but you know, it is what it is, honey. You know, but don't nobody want to believe that Jennifer do no wrong, honey. Y'all know that now. We can't say nothing about Jennifer because she's a victim. She's she's she she she's she just everything up under the sun. But you know, whatever. But she she missed it too. She got she got this party started too by giving that tea to Brooke. Um Jocelyn and Brittany, they're walking around having a conversation. They talked about Evelyn's party and how all that drama got started, and you know. You know, they were saying that they, they are hoping that the women can get together and just get along. Like, they want everybody to get along so they can have fun. You know what I'm saying? And to be honest, if I'm new into this group and I don't really know what's going on now, this drama going on, I'll be kind of green like them too. But at the same time, I stay in the back because I need to watch what's going on. As an Aquarius, I'm very observant about my surroundings and people kind of take that as me being a mean ass, but I'm really not mean. I'm just scoping your ass the fuck out. I'm just trying to see what you give. You know what I'm saying? And if you give, if you giving bulls and I see that you're giving bulls, then I don't want to fuck with you if you get what I'm saying. So it ain't never really no tea about me being a mean ass. It's just that I got to watch you. I got to watch you. I got to see what you give. You know what I mean? That's just all I do. I sit back and don't say shit when I'm around new folks. So then we get into Evelyn and Levon. They're FaceTiming. And then they start discussing like this long distance thing because Levon is in Atlanta and of course Evelyn is in LA. So they discuss like this long distance situation. I don't know about y'all, but I'm, I personally prefer long distance. I prefer long distance. I'm not even going to lie to you. A lot of the guys that I talk to, a lot of the guys that I date, they don't live here. You know what I'm saying? They don't live here at all. Because I haven't been lucky with love around here. It's all the same old sh But, you know, it's like a lot of the good guys that I've met and been in relationships with, they don't live here. And they were great. Like, there was a truck driver that I still got a thing for. There's a truck driver, and he was great to me. That was Brandon. He was great to me. So 
I never really get to have those things. And then, you know, Evelyn is just, you know, worried about this whole married marriage thing because, you know, they met each other on a dating show. And so right now she's like, it's the pressure on us in the private, but then there's pressure on us in the public because they're waiting to see us get married. You know, they sitting up here saying, but when is they going to get married? When is they going to make this shit official? You know what I'm saying? Let's make it official because we ain't getting no baby and i'm ready to be with you you know <clears throat> let's make it last forever still kind of hoarse but you know it is what it is but that's what they got going on so evelyn is just trying <clears throat> to get this thing together but she just don't know i guess there's an anxiety of being married to a person for a few minutes and then it's already a divorce and then you're publicly humiliated and everybody's laughing at you. I think that's what she's trying to avoid. And that's what got her so scared. Just me having an honest moment with this broad. That's all I'm saying. So Evelyn and Brooke, they meet up for lunch and Evelyn gives Brooke some flowers. And then, you know, they were talking about Vanessa and Jackie and how they are both crazy and, and stuff like that. And then, you know, Evelyn had told Brooke that Jackie was the one who said I, that she thought that me and Vanessa would get along. But they're both crazy and they're bonding over their crazy. So that's the reason why they so so good of friends or whatever. And Brooke was laughing. So then they discussed Brittany Renner. And, you know, Evelyn was like, I really like Brittany. Um, she kind of reminds me of myself. You know, she says whatever the she wants to say. You know, there's a lot of things that people say about her that's not necessarily true. Like people think they know you, but they don't. You know, I've gone through a lot of the things that Brittany has gone through. So I want to kind of take her under my wing, you know, and she's going to be coming to lunch with us today. And, you know, Brooke is here for it. So when Brittany arrives, they welcome her with open arms, of course. And then, you know, she sits down and Evelyn and Brooke was like, you know, we were talking before you got here and we were just discussing like how you wrote the book about how to bag a baller, you know, the things you were doing on social media, all the negativity that you've been getting about who you are as a person. And me and Brooke want to come together and change the narrative for you because, you know, the public will say one thing, but the reality is another thing. That is very true. When you are a public figure, the public says one thing, but your reality is very different from what the public is putting out there for you. So sometimes you have to find a way to change the narrative or don't even worry about the narrative because no matter what you do in the public and you're a public figure, there's always going to be a narrative, whether it's true or not. If you get my drift, you feel what I'm saying? So they start talking about Britney's baby daddy and she says that there's absolutely no communication between her and PJ. The only thing that they communicate about is the send offs. And even then, they don't even talk. They, they do it through an app. So that's how they communicate. It's, it's very hard between her and her baby daddy right now. So then after that, Brittany and her mama, Jody, they're sitting down in the living room talking. And Brittany was saying, you know, I miss my son. I really miss him right now. I'm guessing he's with his daddy. And then they started discussing her troubled relationship with her baby father. And she was like, it was when, um, it was when PJ was little PJ was like two months old, where I decided that enough was enough and I got to go. And I need for her to get a little bit more into this situation. Cause it sounds like this was a very tumultuous relationship and it really got her. I ain't going to say panicking, but it got her into another dimension at this point. Like she really doesn't trust too much. You know what I mean? And if you're in a bad relationship, that would do it for you. That would definitely do it. Like you, you, you can't trust. You can't do this. You can't do that. So I definitely understand where she's coming from with that. Because even though I ain't been in a relationship in about two years now, but um, but the but you know it's when you been in so many bad relationships and when a relationship goes wrong from the very beginning, you know it's like to me it's hard for you to get past and then a lot of people like to put numbers on relationships i don't give a if it's a five month relationship a six month or a year it's a fucking relationship and some people fall harder in within a year than they do in five damn years okay people are very judgmental and love to love to put their philosophies on relationships on you and and that's another thing and i know this ain't got nothing to do with nothing but people that's been in a long-term relationship like been in a relationship like five or six years they like to try to make it or even 10 years they try to make it seem like everything is so grand and so perfect when it really ain't all like 
no relationship is perfect, whether it's been five, six, ten, or one. And nothing that none of that is perfect. And I always feel like I'm the type of person that it doesn't matter what length of the time it is, a relationship is a motherfucking relationship. Okay. So when you've been in a toxic situation for a period of time, it does. And if you've been in it a couple of more times than one, it will make you, you know, be very you know, strain about relationships. She was talking about Brooke and Evelyn, how she felt welcomed by them. And she's thankful for that because she wants to meet new people out here. And, you know, she basically came for to LA for more opportunities, honestly. Like she wasn't, you know, there was no other reason for her to come to LA besides get opportunities for meeting these women and forming friendships with some of them. It's also a plus for them. So her mama said, would you ever date another athlete? You know, Brittany didn't really say no. I don't think she's the type of person to say that I never date another athlete. I mean, because listen, I dated a YouTuber. I ain't finna sit up here and say I never date another one. I never say I never date another one. If, if if one came my way and they took me seriously, I would date one. I date somebody on one of these web reality shows. If you if you really want to be technical about it, if it's if it's for real and if it's really worth my time, yeah, I do it. Like I don't give a fuck about none of that. Honestly, I don't care what you do. Like, long as long as I fuck with you, it don't matter. Um, so Shawnee and Evelyn, they get together again. Um, I think this is the day that El that Shawnee is receiving her award and stuff. So Evelyn brings Shawnee some flowers, and um, apparently, you know, like I said, she's Shawnee's receiving a woman of excellence award for the things that she's done for little girls in the community and stuff like that. And Evelyn says that she's struggling with Levon. She's really struggling. She has the anxiety with the marriage thing. You know, it was just like, I got married on July the 4th with Chad, but then in August, I was already divorced. So it's one of those things where she's afraid because she doesn't want to fail. Understood. I don't like Evelyn. Don't get me wrong. I don't fucking like her ass at the, oh, I don't care for Evelyn. I don't give a what happens to Evelyn. But I do relate to this. Because a lot of times we be happy in these relationships sometimes. Sometimes we actually do be happy. But the anxiety of it not going right and everything going wrong is there when you've dealt with a lot of wrong versus right. You feel what I'm saying? So I get it. I get exactly what she's saying. And I get exactly where she's coming from. Trust and believe me on that. I do get it. Um, she said, look, let's go out here and get your award because I didn't mean to bring this up in here. We got to get more positive. I know this was very heavy, but you know, and then here goes Shawnee. Oh, girl, that's just us. We just do stuff like this all the time. So don't, no worries, no worries. So then um, Jackie arrives. Then um, they discuss Vanessa and, um, you know, Evelyn said that she was willing to have her. No, Evelyn said that she can't do Vanessa. And then Jackie said, well, when I talked to Vanessa about you, she said that she was willing to have a conversation. Evelyn said, we gonna, we need to have a conversation and I'm willing to have one. But am I going to be friends with her? Absolutely not. I'm not going to be friends with her at all. You know, we may can get past it, but I don't know about being friends with her. It's just too much for me. I'm one of those people where I can get past stuff. Like I can let it go. You know, once I finally let go of that grudge, I can let it go. We can get past it. But baby, we probably would never be friends or we'll be cool. But I never look at you the same. I'm always looking at you with the side. I don't really trust you because once the trust is gone, it's really nothing for me anymore. So it is what it is. Um. So then after that, Clayana arrives, meets Jackie and Evelyn and sits down at the table. I didn't like that because why is Clayana at Shawnee's? event when she's getting the damn award that doesn't make no sense for her to be there when don't nobody know her like y'all just flapped her up here like why is she there with y'all it don't make no sense and don't none of y'all don't y'all y'all don't know her at all and it's like she's explaining her relationship and how she's redefining herself and stuff like that and it's like y'all are introduced to her because the producers told her to come and now she's just telling y'all her story so y'all can get to know her it's nothing authentic about this they just threw her up there with them because it made no sense for her to be there at shawnee's thing getting an award if anything evelyn and jackie were the only two that needed to be there i don't even think brooks should have been there to be honest like, i'm just being real um evelyn feels like clayana and britney should connect they have similar stories Shawnee receives her award. I feel like it's a crock of bullshit, but she got her damn award. And then um, Clayana meets Shawnee. And I'm like, Clayana don't know Shawnee? Shawnee don't know Clayana? Ain't she an executive producer? How the fuck she don't know? Fake. This is, like I said, it's not authentic. It don't make no sense. 
because usually the girls come in and they introduce by Shawnee, and Shawnee introduced the girls to, but okay. All right. Then Shawnee said, I got the tea, and I want to get this group together so we can talk about things and hash some things out. So Jackie was like, you already got the tea? She's like, yeah, y'all know I got it. So I'm going to get everybody together so we can hash out some of these issues. So then we get into Vanessa once again. Her sister Elise comes, and um, you know she brings her some things, and then um, Elise starts asking her about the settling in part, like how is Vanessa settling in in um, L.A.? Vanessa said everything is fine. You know, the weather is great. The kids like it. Isaiah is still in Arizona. So Elise was like, mm, is he out there partying without you? And then Vanessa was like, I don't know what he's doing, but he better not be partying without me. And so they started bringing up Vanessa uh, flipping out how she was talking to um, Isaiah on the phone. He said he was with his son. She didn't believe him. She looked at the cameras and it really was him with his son. If you got to do all that, if you got to go that crazy because you don't trust your motherfucking man, you don't need to be with him. Instead of worrying about your friend and who can on hunting, you need to worry about your own and worry about getting out that toxic ass relationship because don't nobody got time to be doing all that. I mean, I'm just saying nobody got time to be doing that, period. Um, there's the FaceTime advice. Everybody's getting invited to this little shindig that Shawnee wants to do, and everybody's down for the cause. We get into um Jennifer and Jaseel. Now, from what I was told the other day when I was doing a panel with Jamie and Terrence, is that Jaseel is from West Point, Mississippi. And I think West Point is way up north near Memphis, way up there by Tennessee. So she's from the northern part of Mississippi, but I'm from the Jackson metro part of Mississippi. But I still got to get it. I need to get in touch with her and her people so we can do an interview because I got to get to know more about Jaseel, honey. So then she said that she's a stylist, one of the best stylists in the state of Mississippi, and she's just trying to make her brand bigger. Yes, for the Mississippians being on TV. Okay. Yes, for the Mississippians being on TV. You got Jaseel on TV. You got uh, the Bell Collective on TV, honey. Not to mention, you got my cousin, Malik Heath, who is playing for the Green Bay Packers. You got Life as Mighty being a big TikTok star. And you have me, an award-winning YouTube blogger, two-time award-winning YouTube blogger at that, with 48,000 subscribers entertaining you guys. Love Mississippi being put on the map. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it, okay? Anyway, um... They discuss Jennifer's, they discuss the party, and then they start talking about Jennifer's issues with Jackie. She said, I'm good on Jackie. Like, I ain't got no problem with Jackie. I ain't really got no real issue with Jackie, but I can be cordial with her. Like, I don't know about anything else, but I can be cordial. You know, I can deal with it. Like, it's like I ain't got no problem with Jackie. I can be cordial with Jackie. And to be honest, their issue really wasn't that fucking serious. They made it that fucking serious. Because it wasn't that deep. I don't know what the fuck they were thinking. Why was y'all doing that? Arguing about hotel rooms and shit. Like, the shit was just childish just to me. Like, real. Like, for real, for real. So then, later on, Evelyn suggests that Brittany meets Clayana. She feels like they have a whole lot in common and stuff. So, you know, Brittany was like, well, I'm down for that. You know, anybody that you bring into my space, I feel like they're good people. You are, you are a good judge of character. No, she's not. Then we get into Clayana and her cousin Rashad. They discuss the co-parenting with her and her baby daddy. We don't know about her mother and baby daddy. And then she discussed her meeting with discuss meeting Evelyn. She thinks that Evelyn is cool. Her cousin said that she just he just want her to you know to meet some friends because she ain't got no friends. So then um, Evelyn um, and Brooke they discuss the girls' dinner. They in the back seat of the um, limo discussing the girls' dinner. And then they start talking about how Britney was in the blogs with Shaq. And I remember her being in the blogs with Shaq. That's when the show had first started filming. Everybody was talking about her being out there with Shaq. And they didn't know she was out there fucking Shaq or they were just cool and they were just going out to eat. So they just feel like, you know, I don't really know. I know that Shawnee don't really give up, but I don't think that that is cool for her to be doing it. So now we get into the girls' dinner. And Jackie and Shawnee, they are the first ones there. Um, they discuss, you know, they discuss Brittany and Shaq. And then, you know, Shana was like, I don't care. You know, do what you do. I'm a married woman. I don't give a f So, you know, it is what it is. So then, you know, everybody arrives. The girls arrives. Jackie and Jennifer speak. Jennifer is very, I mean, Jackie is very excited that Jennifer is giving her some damn attention. And she talked about by her hugging her and speaking to her, that means she took accountability. She ain't take accountability for shit because she don't feel like she did nothing. 
Then next thing you know, Brittany was addressed about Shaq. And then, you know, Evelyn was like, well, I know that Shawnee really doesn't care about this situation, but I'm just saying with well, her being my best friend and me having to be around you, I just need to know what's really going on. Well, Brittany was like, it's really nothing there with Shaq. We're just cool. There's really nothing going on. Jennifer was like, but I think a heads up would be would have been nice. You know what I'm saying? A heads up for what? She don't know Shawnee. They're not friends. What the fuck she giving her a heads up for? Like, they don't have any connection. So what are you talking about, Jennifer? But okay. So then Shawnee is basically happy with Britney's positivity. She don't give up about this shit. They the ones who give up looking for moments. Okay. So then Shawnee, then Vanessa comes in. She explains her side of the story. And as soon as she explains her side of the story, Evelyn immediately goes off and says that Vanessa is an embarrassment and that she's been telling lies. And she's an embarrassment to the family circle. The lady in question is very mortified about how you came on this show in this situation, trying to make Evelyn look a certain type of way. Um, Evelyn says that Vanessa had crossed the line and she's starting drama for no reason. Like, why are we arguing? We arguing over a whole nother woman that ain't got nothing to do with this situation. But you want this, you want it to be, you want to be a part of it so you can have something to do. Um, Vanessa said, please stop calling my friend. And then that's when Van that's when Evelyn starts going off and starts screaming to the top of her lungs, talking about my son is with her, you ugly bitch. My son is with her. You know, you know, you can't say nothing about a son or her daughter, honey. So then, you know, Vanessa and Evelyn are going back and forth. And Vanessa said, yeah, go hide behind security, bitch. Go hide behind security. I'm like, yeah, Vanessa's been watching the show for a long time because Evelyn knows to hide behind security because she can't fight. Then as they're taking Evelyn out, Brooke starts going off on Vanessa talking about it ain't got nothing to do with her. And I'm like, Brooke, this ain't got nothing to do with you. Tell me this. Why is it okay for you to be a guard dog and attack dog for Evelyn, but it's not okay for Vanessa to speak up on her friend's behalf? Yeah, it ain't got nothing to do with Vanessa, but it ain't got nothing to do with your ass either. So shut the fuck up. You always looking for a reason to be bad and look for a moment. Shut the fuck up, Brooke. Brooke got on my damn nerves, but she always gets on my nerves. Like, if y'all been watching me, y'all know I ain't never like Brooke. Brooke gets on my everlasting motherfucking nerves, and I'm just being real with y'all. She do. She always jumping into stuff all the time. Like, are you a guard dog? She feeding you kibbles and bits? What the fuck is the tea here? Like, girl, shut the fuck up. And everybody just praising Brooke for this. Everybody just praising her for it. But it's like, for me, if it's not okay for Vanessa to be speaking on that she don't know a motherfucking thing about, which she shouldn't be, Brooke don't need to jump in. If it ain't okay for Vanessa to speak up for Annie, then it ain't okay for Brooke to speak up for Evelyn. Call me biased. I don't give a I'm just saying. But anyway, that was my review for the Basketball Wise, you guys. So I'm Scotty by Nature TV. Be sure to like, rate, comment, subscribe, share this video, and also click on this notification bell so you can be notified whenever a video drops. And if you want to follow me on any form of social media, my Twitter, my IG, and my TikTok will be down below. Rest in peace, Danita. And also, rest in peace to my girl, Tierra Scott. I love you guys. And I'm out of here. To the next one. Bye.